Welcome to the third installment of the ADAO Academy series, where we look at academic research and what it can tell us about how to work in DAOs, how to build DAOs, and things like that. In this video, we'll be talking about the work of Eleanor Ostrom, the first woman to win the Nobel Prize in Economics. She and her colleagues have done over 50 years worth of research about community governance, and they're starting to become used her work in the blockchain space. So I want to try to bring together some of her insights and what it can mean for DAO governance. So a couple of issues with blockchain governance or governance in general, but let's talk about blockchain here, is voter fatigue. So for example, if you are part of many different protocols or you're part of one protocol and there's lots of votes coming up all the time or loads of different proposals. So on Cardano, we have, for example, Catalyst, where people might get tired because there's just so many things, impossible to keep uh, tabs on everything. So that's one issue. Another is mismatch between the most invested and knowledgeable people and others who might be in projects. So this is kind of like the skin in the game, but it's not just about amount of tokens. It's not just about financial investment, but it's also about mental and actual work investment. So like what people actually spend time doing. So for example, in a DAO, we might have people who have a lot of a token, but they don't do the day-to-day -day work of development or marketing, things like this. And so it's too simplistic to say that it's the people with the most tokens who who have the most interest and even the best insight on how to do things for the DAO. Uh, in many cases, it would be the people who are actually working on the project. Um, but so there's something to discuss there. In any case, it's too simple to say it's just about tokens. There's also something about knowledge and investment in terms of effort. And then just a general lack of understanding of how to do community governance, where we're early, as we say, which also means that there's a lot of experimentation and some protocol might set up some system and others copy, but that doesn't mean necessarily that just because everybody copies something, that is the right way to do. So instead, it could be good to look at what we have learned from research about how to do community governance and try to use that in our blockchain governance as well. I think it's clear to most people that not all research is created equal. Some research is better than other research. And so we need to look at, you know, is this actually done in a good way? And one of the reasons that Eleanor Ostrom received the Nobel Prize in economics was because of her extensive research and using loads of different research methods and doing those in a, in a good way. So for example, mathematical game theory, and then experiments based off of the game theory, and also bringing together a lot of insights from different disciplines that previously hadn't talked together, but she could show that, you know, in this discipline and in this discipline and this discipline, we can actually see communities can govern things that previously were thought could only work if the government took control or if it was privately owned, that people wouldn't be able to get together to figure things out. and by showing all these different disciplines outside of the traditional political economy, that yes, in fact, people can figure things out and come together. And then finally, uh, her and her colleagues own case studies in loads of different places around the world, uh, both in the developed West and in uh, developing nations, loads of different types of case studies. And uh, yeah, so bringing all these to, together to show both that communities can govern resources. You don't have to have some government. You don't have to have some somebody who, who owns it individually, but people can actually get together and allocate resources in a good way. And also, which is what we'll get to now, principles for how communities who do this in a good way, you know, what are the principles for good community governance? So based off of you know, many, many years of research and lots of statistical analyses. Eleanor Ostrom and her colleagues, they came 
to some general principles. And we've shortened it down to four here. And these are clear boundaries, that everybody knows what the boundaries are. Optimal alignment, transparency, and interestingly, effective sanctions and conflict resolution. So the first design principle is clear boundaries. And this is split up into two, user boundaries and resource boundaries. And the user boundaries is that it's clear and everybody knows who has access to the resource and who doesn't. And under what circumstances people have access or don't. So it's not saying here, you know, who should or who shouldn't, but the design principle is that who should have access and who shouldn't, that should be clear. The same with the resource boundaries. This design principle isn't saying what the boundaries should be. It's saying that it should be very clear to everybody what the boundaries are. So for example, in the case of a DAO, the user boundaries could be who has access to the treasury, who doesn't, under what circumstances do you have access and, and not. And the same with the resource boundaries. You know, what, what is the treasury? What's included? What's, out, what's outside? What is inside and outside of the DAO itself? So these kind of clear boundaries uh, are important. And again here, this isn't some CEO deciding these things. It's not the government deciding, but it's the people coming together to decide these things and creating clear boundaries. That's the important point. Design principle number two is about optimal alignment. And here there are some clear recommendations. So the first one is local conditions, which is to make sure that the DAO or community governance is aligned with the local conditions outside of it. So for example, it might be, you might need to think differently about creating a DAO on Cardano than on Ethereum. Very basic things like a different blockchain, which might mean different product development. It could also mean other things, you know, there's different culture perhaps in Cardano than on Ethereum or on a blockchain like Solana. So to think about, are we aligned with the context we find ourselves in? That's, that's the first point, local conditions. The second principle on this list is provision and appropriation, which means that somebody should be able to appropriate or take more of a resource than somebody who has provided more to that resource. So for example, somebody shouldn't be able to take out more from a DAO than somebody else, somebody else has, who has put more into the DAO. And putting more into the DAO doesn't necessarily have to be just in terms of finances, going back to what we mentioned earlier, but could also be, you know, actual time put in, mental effort, and, you know, we talk about skin in the game. So this is broadening that from just money to also, you know, life, passion, hours in a day, engagement, things like that. So it's just to make sure that, that the DAO has a good understanding of what people provide and what people get from the DAO and that those should be aligned and, and not misaligned. The third one on this list, collective choice arrangements, is somewhat similar to the previous one. It's about that the people who are putting the most into the DAO should have the most say about how the rules are created. Sometimes in the blockchain space, we want to say that it's just fully open, everybody has a say. But what Eleanor Ostrom's research shows is that it should be the people who are most affected by and who put most of the value into the organization who have the most say about how things should be run. And this relates to the fourth point, nested enterprises, which means that, for example, in a DAO, you might have different working groups and that those working groups in their sphere of influence should have more say than everybody who happens to have a governance token within their sphere of expertise and the effort that they put into the work. Design principle three is called monitoring by Ellen Ostrom and colleagues, but we've put it here as transparency. 
it basically means the same thing, but it's more of a blockchain approach to it. So it's not about somebody monitoring somebody else, but it's about everybody being transparent about what they use and how they go about using it. And that also includes you know, the work that we do and things like this. So transparency so that people can see what's going on so that we make sure that nothing is overused and that things are going the right way. So in Eleanor Ostrom's language, th this is about everybody being able to monitor everybody else. And in the blockchain space, it's about having transparency. I'm sure you can see there's two sides of the same coin there and how that's very important for having community governance of some shared resource. The final design principle is an interesting one in the blockchain space, which has to do with relevant sanctions and effective conflict resolutions. So we might want to say that, you know, everything's open and anybody has access. And in principle, that's probably a good way to go in the start. And what Ellen Ostrom and her colleagues found that in community governance systems that were effective and lasted a long time, they also had this design principle. Graduated sanctions means that the first time somebody does something which goes against the agreed upon rules of that community, again, this isn't some CEO deciding or somebody who owns the protocol individually. It's not some government. It's a community coming together to decide on things. Within that community, it's good to have graduated sanctions, which means that the first time somebody does something that goes against the agreed upon rules, that they're told, for example, please don't do that. This is what we do here instead. And then if the individual follows, everything is great. Then we just continue. If the person again does something that they shouldn't, then there should be some minor penalty. And then if everything works out, great, just continue. If it doesn't, then a more severe penalty. And then onto perhaps removal from the DAO itself. So that's graduated sanctions. That's something that they found in their studies that the communities who were able to govern well together, they had this principle. The other one was effective conflict resolution mechanisms. You know, we want to create DAOs and there's a lot of hype around it and great possibilities, but it's also people with different opinions, different views, sharing some kind of resource and even just having different ideas of how to progress the DAO, for example. And so there are going to be differences of opinions. So to have some good conflict resolution mechanisms is important to have in place. And also on this one, uh, we don't really have a lot of options and haven't come so far in the blockchain space yet. There's something called Clearos Courts on Ethereum, which is a kind of decentralized legal system and which could be good to have something similar perhaps on Cardano. And so what Ellen Ostrom and her colleagues observed is that, you know, these were different design principles that were find, found in the wild, so to speak. She hadn't gone around and taught people how to do these things, but what they saw is that people and groups of people who came together and, and followed these design principles, that they were able to be effective and use their resources efficiently and sustainably that they were able to last a long time so again you know in the DAO space many of these principles we will see them however however it will also be important for the projects that are building DAOs to go through these and think through are we making sure that we have all of these or do we have a plan for how we will implement them especially design principle number two having optimal alignment in all kinds of different ways and design principle four here about sanctions and resolution conflict resolution are things that seem to often be missing and for projects i want to be able to have good community governance and last a long time it could be important to include these things particularly clear boundaries and transparency are perhaps more common in the DAO space but also good things to think through. So based on you know five decades or more of research, 
these are some of the design principles that are important for creating local governance systems and led by the community. Of course, there's a lot more to say about Ostrom's research. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out or to look at the links uh, below referencing her Nobel Prize speech and her article based off of her speech and a few other resources.